Hey everybody, I'm doing some work on my 125 today and I wasn't going to shoot any video about it but of course as soon as I got in there I started finding some stuff that I find to be interesting and so I want to share it with everybody and we're going to shoot a little video about doing some work on this tank today after all. My regular viewers will know that I've been treating this tank. We are going to talk about what's been going on in this tank. It's not actually as bad as I've been making it sound. Um, it's all very easily explainable now that I actually know what's going on in the tank. Not a big deal at all, actually. So we'll talk about that in a little while. But first, I wanted to point out that one of the things that had concerned me was the amount of detritus that can collect in this tank. And you can see how much crud and gross stuff is all swirling around in the tank right now. That did not come from where I expected it to. There is... A uh, big piece of wood down here, and it's got a really large cavity under it. I don't know why I always try to get it on video. I know I can never see it through the glare. But it's a large enough cavity that I can put this entire piece of plastic inside of it and move it around while it's in there. And what I expected to happen was just a solid mass of just black nastiness to start moving up through uh the the drain there because I just expected it to be full of crud, and it was not. Hardly any stuff came out of there at all. You know, the amount of stuff you might expect to find, you know, collected in the corners or something like that. There was definitely some crud in there, but not much at all. And I sort of suspect that that's large enough that either the loaches or the um, plecos that I have in this tank might go in there and swim in and out of it. And there's even an uh, opening at the far end where the woodwork is, is basically a tunnel all the way through. And so it probably has a fair amount of water circulation. And with the fish swimming around in there, kicking the stuff up, it probably keeps it relatively clean. Where all this nasty, horrible crud came from is the plants. I expected to find a little bit of stuff in the plants as I started kind of rooting around in there. But once I started really grubbing around and, and just sort of rooting the gravel back around through here and, and, you know, just sort of stirring it up to get the stuff knocked loose, the amount of crud and filth that came out of there blew my mind. And that's when I said I'm going to stop and get some video of this. So what I'm going to do is set up the tripod. And while this mass is a much smaller... Uh, mass of, of Java there, I think we're probably going to see similar results. And I have not yet gotten into that mass either, so we're going to try to get a look at that. So let me get some of these lights turned out. Let me get the camera set up on the tripod with a little less glare, and we will see what that actually looks like when I get in and root around in those plants. So hang on a second. All right, let's see how that looks. Right, now, first thing I gotta do is get the siphon out of one side and into the other. You can do that easily enough just by turning it up and scooping it and then real quickly getting it into the next chamber before all the water drains out of it. And that'll keep the siphon going. So look, you can already see how much crud is starting and I haven't even really gotten this in here yet. There's some pieces of a kind of java fern I forgot was even in the tank. There's some of that stuff living in there. There's some more java fern. There's some more of that java fern. Now remember, I've got the 1500 gallon per hour power head on at the moment. The filter shut down, but the power head is still flowing. And it's got plants and stuff packed all over. I'm sure it's not moving 1,500 gallons per hour at the moment. Uh, but it is a fairly significant power head, so we are still getting some circulation around the tank. It's just that these plants are so thick at this point, it's, it really, really is just eating up my circulation. So I am going to have to get in there. I don't know if today is going to be the day I actually remove a lot of the plants. But today is definitely going to be a day where we remove a lot of the water. I'm going to get the rest of that medication out of the tank, or at least a lot of it out. Uh, I'm probably going to do about a 50% water change today. And again, we will talk about everything that's going on in this tank uh, in a little while here. So hang on for that. But just look at the amount of stuff that is coming out of my plants. I always tend to think of plants as being something in a tank that helps keep the tank, you know, sort of just cleaner in an overall generalized sort of sense. You know, the plants make the tank healthier and everything. But for somebody with 
fairly extensive gardens out in the yard, you'd think I would be cognizant of the fact that even plants need their love and attention and care as well, or they don't necessarily do what you expect them to do either. But that is really, really an eye-opener for me, how much stuff collects in those plants. So, my lax husbandry as of late has been part of what's going on in this tank, and again, we will be uh, talking about that more in detail. But I really believed that my lax husbandry consisted mostly of the failure to get in and gravel vac underneath of all of the little nooks and crannies and stuff. And it actually turns out that what I should have been doing all the time is running my fingers uh, through the hair, you know, running my fingers through all that fern and everything and getting that crud knocked out of there because it is a ton of it. And it just keeps coming. Every time I swirl it around, I just get more and more of it swirling into the tank. So we're going to try to drain, you know, a bunch of that will get pulled out in the drain. I'm going to have to go clean my shower stall after I'm done with this water change. So there you go. We're still working on it. Like I said, I'm going to get a lot of that green uh, medication out of there. I'm not going to talk about the whole tank in this video because it's going to be a long list of things that we're going to go over and I really don't want to try to do that while I'm standing here uh, in the middle of the water change. So we're going to wait till we're done this or perhaps I'll shoot a second video while we're filling the tank back up and we can have a look at it, uh, talking about it or whatever. But make sure you're subscribed in any case and that way you won't miss anything I got coming up. You never know what it's going to be with me. And I'm sure a lot of people want to find out what has been going on in this tank. And again, we're going to have a nice comprehensive video where we talk about everything from the funny smell to the loaches to the filter, uh, the, the cloudy water, all of it's going to go over in a whole big, probably 20 minute discussion video coming up here real soon. So make sure you subscribe. You don't want to miss that or anything else. And of course, you're going to want to see this tank once it's looking good and nice and cleaned out again and has had a little bit of a haircut. Don't know if I'm going to give it the massive haircut I was intending to originally, but this tank is due for a pretty serious and significant wackety chop here coming up here pretty soon. So again, make sure you're subscribed. You won't miss any of that. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching that one, and I will see you real soon on the next one.